Hello everyone and welcome to Cottage and Kranza. If you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. I will really, really appreciate it a lot. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not an expert. This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Please do your own research and form your own opinions. The sources I've used will be linked down below. Okay. So, we ended the first part, and I'm going to put this in the first part of this video as well, about Daisy and what happened till she got to South Africa. So in South Africa, she finally finished her nursing training. And she finished it, and she was described as being very compassionate and such a good nurse. And everybody just really, really liked her. And then in 1908, she met a man called Alf, Alfred Cole, and they married in 1909, and they actually married the same day, day the date um, of the year that poor Bert Fuller died, and that to me is also just a bit chilling, because you know why not the next weekend, or the previous weekend, so that is a bit chilling to me, and then they got, they were married. He was 36, she was 22, and this is the man that she had her children with. Now, only one of her five children survived. So, again, knowing that she ended up being a poisoner, it is a bit chilling that only one in five survived. Now, obviously, in those days, children, the mortality rate, unfortunately, was higher but still one in five is still a bit suspicious so she first had twins and they were born early so yes it is possible you know that they um they died because of they were just too fragile and the medical advances at the time unfortunately wasn't good enough and then the third child Cecil Rhodes he survived and she spoiled him rotten. And then her fourth, fourth child died at the age of five. And she told people that he died of an abscess in the liver. And then her fifth child, her fifth baby, was only 15 months old. And he died and he had convulsions. And the way he died is, that's the way it is, is described. So... That is also very, very chilling. I mean, they were babies. But we will never know. No one looked into it. So it is possible that it was natural. Especially for the people that believe that maybe Daisy was innocent of everything. Okay. So now, in 1923, Alfred took some bits and salts. That Daisy, his wife, had given him. He started having convulsions and he complained of, you know, feeling very, very unwell. He had muscles, muscle spasms and he was very, very ill. So Daisy phoned the doctor and he came. But he didn't think that anything too bad was going on because he described some medicine and he left. And then, a bit later on, he got ill again. And Daisy called her neighbours to support her in this awful circumstances. And then she phoned the second doctor and he came. And when he got there and he was at bed, there was nothing he could do. And Alfred, Alf, died. Now, here is another interesting thing. He did not want to sign the death certificate. He thought something strange was going on. And he did ask for an autopsy. Um, and they, in the autopsy, they found that he died because of uh, things in his liver going on and brain hemorrhage. Oof, mispronouncing that. But blood on the brain. So natural. And then, again, if you think about what happened later, I don't understand how that even happened but again we have to think of the time and 
it's 1923 and that's what they found so daisy walked away and she got money again and money definitely was daisy's um, motive for doing the things that she she did it was definitely so she got quite a bit of money so for for a bit she was fine and she was doing well and she and Cecil went on holidays um, and they enjoyed life for a bit. Okay, so Daisy's next husband was William Sprout. So both husbands, Alf and William, was both plumbers. There's not a lot of information about their um, families and things like that and to me it is important to talk about the victims because the victims are the most important but in the sources it was very very hard to find you know descriptions of them but the way i read it is that they were very very hard working and they did their plumbing and they just wanted to make an honest living and they really, really loved Daisy. Um, we will also see with her third husband. They never, ever thought that she would do something like this. So, um, yeah, that's just to me, that's very, very sad that they were so trusting. And again, that she was this nurse and she seemed so compassionate. And somehow this just makes things more chilly. So, she married William Sprout, and on their second anniversary, he got ill. It was again the same kind of symptoms, you know, convulsions, and he was just really, really ill, and he succumbed, and he, he died. But this is where things start happening. During his, um, while he was on his deathbed, um, Daisy phoned his brother, who was also in South Africa, his mum lived in England, and while he was on his deathbed, she was very, very adamant that he must sign a new will, because he didn't, he hasn't changed his will yet, and she, uh, his brother was, you know, obviously this is not what's important at this time, but she actually wrote a will herself, um, and let poor William sign it while he was so ill. He actually recovered from, sorry, he recovered the first time and now the will was changed and then a month later he did die. Now the brother did decide at this point that he was going to keep an eye on Daisy because something just didn't feel right. Um, so yeah, the gut feeling going on there. And then and then her final husband was Sidney de Malka. Okay, so he was a final husband and he didn't die. But at this point, Cecil was not a good son. Now, remember, she spoiled him as a child. She spoiled him absolutely rotten. But he, at this point, he, he always lost his jobs. He always had stories about why he lost them. But he was just described as very rude. And in this new household, there was also Daisy also now had a stepdaughter. And he was just kind of getting in the way. And he actually assaulted his mother twice as well. And then on one morning when Cecil went to go to work, Daisy gave him some coffee in a flask. He went to his work and during his break, he had some of his coffee and he shared it with a friend as well. He came back, he didn't finish work because he started feeling very, very ill. And he came home. And again, it is, you know, convulsions and things like that. And he died. And the doctor that was there at the time thought that it was natural. Again, Daisy wasn't suspected of anything. But but William's brother was 
keeping an eye on things. And he went to the police and he said, listen, something is not right. There's just, it's been three deaths and it's all kind of the same symptoms. And yes, the doctors say that it's natural causes, but it's just very suspicious. And he must have been convincing because they exhumed the bodies. And this time when they looked at Alf and William's bodies, they found the bones to be, the bones were purple, or yes, if there was a color on, color on it, um, and it was an immediate sign that they died of strychnine poisoning. So strychnine is in the same league as arsenic, um, and it's very dangerous, and it, and it kills pretty quickly. So... I have questions about that. I think Google will, or if people see my Google searches, they will think that I want to kill people with strychnine. Because I just thought that, why didn't they see it with the first autopsy of ALF? And I, I don't know. I couldn't find out why the bones, I mean, the bones must have not turned that color yet at that aut autopsy, because otherwise, I think they would have seen it. I would, assume so that's interesting um and also quite sad uh because it you know if the first autopsy if they found it out you know could have been spared but anyway so both her husbands had this pink color coloring coloring on the bones and so strychnine poisoning definitely and then when they exhumed Cecil's body, they found arsenic underneath the nails and in the hair. So all three of them died of poisoning. Now here is where another interesting thing is ha happened. So Daisy was charged with the murder of the three men, but she actually only got found guilty on one count. And that is the murder of her son. She got found not guilty of the murders of her first two husbands because they said that the evidence was just too circumstantial. And then the way that they did the third one, how they tied it, is with the coffee. Because the friend, remember, when Cecil shared his coffee that day with a friend, the friend also felt ill. But he only had a little bit of coffee. And they tested him. And he actually had arsenic in his system as well. So that's how they tied it. You know, she made the coffee, the flask, and then the friend. So they could tie that together. So, yeah, I just want to say, so if that is true, technically she wouldn't be the first serial killer because she only got found guilty of one. Now, obviously, I feel my opinion is that she killed all three of them. And I am suspicious of the deaths of her children as well. And maybe even Bert Fuller. But there is a whole book written that I couldn't get my hands on about Daisy DeMalco guilty or innocent and i will leave a link down below to someone someone made a video of it it's an afrikaans video about this book and there was there's also some interesting comments there now i really i did a lot of research and i read a lot and i really wanted this book someone bought it on bid or buy for really cheap but then when you look for it again, it's only in university libraries. And I'm not close to that. But what I could gather from a blog written about it, and I will also put this in the sources, this blog, is that it has more to do with the court of law. That if this case was in a court of law today, okay, now first the uh, death penalty got admolished in 1995. So I'm I've gotten death penalty anyways but it's just that I as I say I didn't read the book but what I gather from it is that in a court of law she would have been found not guilty now it's just there's just too much coincidences but 
I'm not a lawyer, so I, you know, it it may very well be true that she wouldn't have been found guilty of anything. But then also there's other evidence because while the trial was going on, her photo was everywhere, on the newspapers everywhere. And someone recognized her. And this person was someone that she bought poison for. She said that she wanted to um, euthanize her cat with arsenic. I'm, again, not a medical person. And she used a different name. And he testified in court to that. So to me, the coffee, the flask, and this testimony that she bought this poison under a fake name and the only reason this person came forward was because he saw this picture in the newspaper so that is you know for me you know then she is guilty but again it's interesting to think about how courts worked back then um, and even further back in history uh, because they didn't have all the medical advances so I suspect a lot of people got convicted probably um, with circumstantial evidence and some of them probably I mean some of them were innocent I would think definitely so in my opinion I think she's guilty of it um, like I said check out the video that says that she's not like I said I couldn't read the book uh, what I could gather was that it's basically saying that it's just she wasn't proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That's what I could gather. Like I said, I would just like to read this book. But all the other sources, I, I read books, I've read the Crime Magazine article, and all of them agree, you know, that it's straightforward. She killed her husbands with strychnine poisoning and her son with arsenic poisoning. So that is the mainstream thought and what the what most sources say and if you look at the Wikipedia that is what you will find and that's why I thought that this case would be so easy to do but unfortunately it's not that simple because I couldn't read this book and there's just you know also the first autopsy that they didn't see it um, I wonder about the children when I got into it, you know, the one and five children. And then strychnine poisoning makes your urine turn black. And now we have to think about being fuller again. Black water fever, black urine. Did she maybe do that? She got money. Money was obviously what, in my opinion, was a motive obviously she's this and and this, this is the other thing they said when they evaluated her when she was in the case when they were busy with the case they didn't find her to be a psychopath they said that she was normal so i don't know maybe then she was just evil i don't know again the people that's from the school of thought that she's innocent they will disagree with me here um there's like i said please watch that video and like i said form your own opinion but it's just the and sorry the thing with the bird filler situation was just that when she got back in south africa she actually also got black water fever so i i, I don't think that she murdered him again this is my opinion um and yeah, it's just chilling because people, you know, people see that photo and it's like, okay, it's, you know, that's what happened, bombs away. And then when you read about it and how people believe her, her, her third husband believed her till the end, till the day he died. And he was actually also ill. He also had gotten ill and he still believed that she was innocent even though he himself have taken ill. Uh, so I think he would have been the next victim. Uh, and he believed her. So she, obviously, she's very convincing, very charming, very charismatic. And 
she did not obviously no one looks good in a mugshot i would assume but she it's not just about looks i mean they say that the men that ma married her thought that they were so lucky um, because she had just this magnetic personality and then uh like i watch christine randall she's I'm such a huge, huge, huge fan of hers. She would say that, you know, the mask. You know, people, I think most people or people didn't see the real Daisy. They honestly didn't. I think the people that did that evaluation probably didn't see the real Daisy. She was really, really convincing. And for the longest time, people never looked into it. If it wasn't for the brother of the second husband, she may have gotten away with it and maybe she would have or probably she would have killed again and then in 1932 she was hanged and she so she got the death penalty so i will link down the sources i will link them below and please let me know what your opinion is uh, like i said officially she was only convicted of one murder and that was the murder of her son and that's interesting because technically then she isn't a serial killer but obviously all the sources not all the sources 99 percent of them that i looked at said that that's what happened but like i said there's this book and it, the book got really good reviews as well they say that it's the research is so thorough and things like that. So, unfortunately, I could not get my hands on that book. Uh, like I said, uh, all I know is that I think that it has to do with the court and how things are circumstantial. But anyway, please, again, if you do enjoy this video, give me a like. And also, <laughs> um, I think I will get better at this. I love telling stories. Um, I am interested in true crime. I like being creative, so this is why I'm doing it. So if you enjoy, like, if this isn't something that you enjoy, please don't watch friends and family. It's fine. I, it, it doesn't matter. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I will continue making it regardless because this is for me. It's it's fascinating, and I love to tell stories and be creative and obviously unfortunately these stories are true and just again in the next case i will try very very um i will definitely give more time to the victims uh, the next case i will be covering is the fun bedar murders that's more recent so i think it will be easier to get information about the victims because like I said, I couldn't find a lot about the victims, um, except the jobs and things like that. So, yes, that's it. And I will up upload on Fridays. Um, and I hope to see you again. Thank you very much.